In the last video we made DIY go-kart out of plywood and simple store-bought items and the family kids enjoyed the driving experience quite a lot until the gear assembly gave out and the cart could no longer move forward. So today we will identify the problem, make some improvements and hopefully have another test drive. The current go-kart prototype is driven by cordless drill that powers the gear assembly and the gears are secured on an M8 rod using flange nuts which we glued to the gears using two component epoxy glue and thread glue. The hope is the flange nuts would be enough to fix the gears to the axis. However, after 30 minutes of driving around the garden, the glue had separated and the nuts required retightening more and more frequently. This means we have to find a better solution to fix the gears to the axis while keeping the original goal in mind making the go-kart using only simple, easily available components. So after a couple of evenings pondering about the options, we had two ideas. The first one was using T-nuts. The spikes in the nut could prevent the gears from skipping and the thread could be enough to successfully gluing it to the rod. This approach would require us to make each gear out of two components. The second option was using long hex nuts. The idea would be to make a hex shaped hole in each gear and secure a long hex nut in the middle. The hope is that the plywood would be strong enough to prevent the hex nut from shredding the wood. Once we had the potential solutions figured out, it was time to redesign the go-kart and adjust the gear assembly. Since one of the biggest headaches when assembling the previous gears was getting the positioning right, this time we had the idea of placing everything as compact as possible, leaving no gaps between the nuts, gears and the ball bearings. After the adjustments, the T-nut option was more or less the same size as the one we currently have. However, the hex nut gear assembly turned out considerably smaller. We managed to make the back 5 cm narrower. Because of the reduction, the go-kart should require slightly less power to drive. That's in theory. But to be sure, we have to test it out. But before we start cutting the parts for the gear modules, we have to make a couple of new tire rings. Since we glued both back wheels to the assembly, the new test required us to make a new wheel. Anyway, while the rubber sealant is setting in the mold, we can start working on the plywood components. These aren't much different from the previous prototype and they all require going through the same crafting steps, CNC operations, smoothening the edges on the router table and a little bit of sanding. Before we can assemble the new gear mechanisms, we have to cut the threaded rod to the correct length. This time we are using M10 rod instead of the M8 rod we used previously. It should be a little bit sturdier and more durable. Then we can start gluing together the gears for the T-nut assembly. It's important to align the gears precisely to ensure they turn nicely and can properly transfer the power from one axis to the next. Once the gears are glued together, we can trap the ball bearings between the axis supports and the bearing covers. After the previous prototype, we spent a little bit of time analyzing the best gear assembly steps and it turned out we could glue the bearing covers to the axis supports before assembling the whole module. Once the bearing covers are in place, we can use the T-nut to mark where the spikes will be located. This way we can pre-drill the holes for them and minimize the hammering required to install the T-nuts. After the holes are marked and pre-drilled, we can mix the two component epoxy glue and secure the nuts in place. I had the idea to hammer the first nut in place and then use fully threaded screw to pull the T-nut on the other side in place. Well, for obvious reasons, it didn't work. So I ended up hammering all the nuts in place. The problem was none of the nut threads lined up, so we couldn't install the gears to the axis. I could probably realign the nuts and threads by hammering them deeper or pulling them out a little bit. But it seemed to be too complicated, since one of the goals for the go-car project was to make it easy to replicate. The T-nut approach has huge potential of going wrong and wasting material. With that in mind, it was time to test out the long hex nut approach. This should be way easier to set up and assemble. All we have to do is put the hex nut in the middle of each gear and add a little bit of glue to ensure it won't slide around on the nut. 
This time we are using the same epoxy glue as we used before. After applying, the glue strip shouldn't be too large since it could potentially rub against the axis support components while spinning and therefore affect the go-kart performance. While the glue sets, we can continue by adding a lock nut to each gear axis. The nail and ring inside the lock nut will prevent it from detaching from the axis. Once all three of the gear axes have a lock nut attached, we can take the support component and slide it on the shortest one. Then we can add the thread glue to the axis and install the small gear assembly. We have to be careful not to squeeze the glue inside the bearing. That could mess up the whole module. Once the gear is in place, we can take the second shortest rod, slide it inside the other axis support component and glue the large gear onto the axis. Then we can add another long nut. It will not only help us locking large gear in place, but it also serves as a spacer between the gear and the next axis support component. Anyway, once we have the assemblies made, we can join both of them together and glue a long nut to the small gear axis. We will attach the wrench socket to this long nut, joining the power drill with the gear module. But before we get to that, we have to finish the gear assembly. So I slide the last rod through the axis support component and glue the large gear on it. Then we can glue another lock nut to the axis and tighten it. To be 1000% sure it won't be coming apart. When that is done, we can join the latest assembly to the one we made earlier. And then we can glue the small gear to the axis. To conclude the updated gear module, we have to add another axis support component and secure it in place with a lock nut. If we had designed everything correctly, we shouldn't have any problems attaching the gear module to the frame components and the joint seems to match perfectly. After attaching both frame components, we can test out how well the gears turn. Everything is working well, however, we can't be entirely sure before we add the new assembly to the go-kart and give it a test drive. So without much hesitation, we start working on removing the back assembly. To achieve that, we first have to remove the pedal mechanism and the screws that join the go-kart floor to the back frame component. Now nothing is stopping us from detaching the half lap joints that hold together the main frame with the back assembly. And with a little bit of work with mallet, we can separate the parts. Since we will need the brake wheel assembly for the updated back module, we have to take apart the old one. Which means unscrewing a bunch of screws and removing two components till we can access the module. While we are on topic of removing things, we have to also take the handbrake and attach it to the new back frame component. After assembling the previous prototype, I realized it would have been much easier to install the handbrake before joining the back frame components together. So after we have the handbrake in its new position, we can attach the brake wheel assembly to the build and install the back grip. Then it's just a matter of pre-drilling all the holes and securing the axis support parts with the stainless steel screws before we are ready to reassemble the go-kart. After joining the half-lap joints, we have to secure the assembly through the go-kart floor component. In the latest update, we also added two screw holes at the back of the go-kart to be sure the whole assembly won't come apart during the drive. After everything is secured, we can reattach the acceleration pedal with all its attributes. We are not far from the test drive, but we are missing a back wheel, so we can quickly assemble the new one. It's more or less the same as the old wheels, however, this time we decided to trap two long nuts in the middle of the rim. So after the doubles are in place, we can glue smaller center pieces to the disc. All of them have a hex shaped hole which will secure the long nuts and simplify attaching the wheel to the axis. After we have the tire ring supports attached to the dowels, we can glue the rubbers to the wheel. To finish up the wheel assembly, I added a little bit of wood glue to the center component and of course a bit of sealant to the last tire ring. 
After placing the other disc on top of the wheel, there seemed to be a small gap between the centerpiece and the wheel disc, so I decided to clamp it together and wait a couple of hours for the glue to set. After a while I could remove the clamps and secure the long nuts in the middle of the wheel. To ensure the thread lines up properly, I attached the long nuts to a screw before hammering them in place. Now we can glue the wheel to the gear axis. Again, we are using the thread glue. Before testing the new assembly in the park, we have to attach the cordless drill to the go-kart, secure it in place with a couple of zip ties and join the string from the pedal to the back of the frame. This time we decided to do the test drive on a paved road, which could be more forgiving to the go-kart. The smooth road surface provides less friction to the wheels, which means less resistance to the gears and the power drill. In the previous video only the youngest niece could enjoy the fastest drill setting and the speed that comes with it. However, this time the gears were able to push the cart with the oldest kids in sight without any problems. And after an hour of driving around, the drill's battery was still going strong and the cart was holding together nicely but most importantly the hex nut gear solution seemed to be quite reliable and it serves well in the go-kart project if you would like to make a go-kart for your family kids we have shared the CNC files on our website which include the DXF files for different CNC sizes specifications and easy to follow assembling instructions every purchase on our website helps us develop new CNC designs and it's a great way to support our channel while getting a cool and useful CNC projects to build. Thank you for watching and supporting us and I'll see you next time.